Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning for worship and fellowship and a great message. Before we jump in, let's go ahead and greet one another because I know if you're like me, we like to do online service in our living room with our friends and family during this time. So let's go and greet and love somebody. And also, wherever you're watching from on whatever platform, we would love for you to chat in, subscribe or comment to let us know that you're here and where you're watching from. Let's get to it. Good morning, Church Alive family. Thank you for joining with us this morning. We're super excited to have you. We're about to join into one of my favorite times of service, which is worshiping our God. Please stand as we worship together. Just 
that out even louder even louder even louder 
Come on, lift up your voice this morning. Come on, raise a hallelujah this morning. Come on, I just want you to sing. We're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate this morning. We're going to celebrate whenever you're watching this. Come on, celebration, 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 celebration. Even louder, even louder. We're going to sing even louder. We're going to praise even louder and louder and louder. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church, arise, church. Come on, I want to get you excited. I want you to be excited this morning. Come on, can you feel it in your spirit? Come on. Even if the drums stop beating, my soul will keep on singing. Even louder, even louder. Even when my eyes can't see it, I'll sing to loud believe. Don't stop beating, my soul will keep on singing, even louder, even louder, even when my eyes can't see it, I'll sing till I believe it. He is up to something. He 
is up to something God is doing something right now Cause he is up to something He is up to something God is doing something right now Right now He is healing someone He is saving someone God is doing something right now Right now He is healing someone He is saving someone God is doing something right now, right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now, right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now, right now. Come on. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now, right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now. Start of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. God turn it around, 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 God turn it around. Won't you turn it around? Jesus will call. Come on, church, I just want you to press into him this morning. I just want you to sing to him and worship him for who he is. And let's remember just to worship him for who he is. Not exactly for what he's done for us, even though that's amazing to do in itself, but just to worship him for who he is. God, we worship you for who you are, God. And we know, Father, nothing is impossible for you, God, that you turn things around, that you bring healing. You are the restorer. You are the comforter. You are the encourager, God. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, you are. You are. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are the great I am. And we know, God, that every situation that the enemy has planted for evil, God, you will turn it into good, and you will turn it around. And this morning when we sing that song, I just feel like things are breaking off of people. Because God can turn it around. God turns everything around. He is up to something, he is up to something God is doing something right now Come on church He is up to something, he is up to something God is doing something right now, right now He is healing someone, he is saving someone God is doing something right now Come on church He is healing someone he is saving someone. God is doing something right now, right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now, right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now, right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now, right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now. All of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. God turn it around, 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 God turn it around. Come on, God turn it around, 
God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Come on, let's speak that. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Come on, let's speak that over our families. Let's speak it over our nation. Let's speak it over every situation, every situation that the enemy, the demonic set up against us. Come on, we'll speak it and know that God will turn things around. His hand is already on it. God, we thank you, Jesus, for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your promises. We thank you, Lord, that you are faithful. God, that you keep us in the palm of your hands. And even when we're wrong, even when we make mistakes, God, that we can come and repent and say, God, turn this around for me today. Turn this around. And God, you are faithful. You are faithful, Lord, to turn it around. Nothing is impossible for the King. So this morning, I just want to bless you. I just want to bless you this morning. Father, thank you for everyone out there who is watching this right now, who is worshiping with us right now. God, I just speak over their life, Lord, and I speak peace over them, confidence over them to know that, God, you turned things around and nothing is too impossible for you. God, so I just want to bless them and I want to speak healing over them because this song says he is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now and I believe in your homes, wherever you're watching this right now, I believe that God wants to touch you and wants to love you and wants to take care of you. So if you have any illness right now in your body, I'm just going to pray for you. Father, I pray for anybody who has illness in their body, Father, from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, God, I just pray right now, God, I speak to that sickness and I demand it to go out of their body right now. Sickness leave out of their body right now in Jesus name cancer leave out of their body right now in Jesus mighty name any children with cancer I pray over them right now I see children with cancer right now God wants to heal and deliver them in the name of Jesus Christ nothing is too impossible for him cancer is nothing to God and some people think cancer has a huge thing on it because it looks like the disease that cannot be healed healed but God says I can heal that disease and God wants to heal that right now so I speak over that child I speak over that person right now that has cancer in their body and I demand that cancer out of their body right now in the name of Jesus Christ you have to leave cancer out of their their body right now that demonic that demonic sickness out of their body right now I rebuke it away I rebuke it away right Right now in the mighty name of Jesus I rebuke it away right now in the mighty name of Jesus and I pray for healing over that body healing in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ healing over their body right now God I pray for eyes that need to see God that are blinded that want to see God physically and spiritually I see glasses of clarity and I see father right now you're showing me glasses of clarity people who need to see who are blinded who need the scales lifted off their eyes to see. So physical eyes see right now, see right now, be blinded no more. Clarity, I speak clarity over eyes. Heal right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I see spiritual eyes opening right now, right now. Spiritual eyes open right now. The demonic setup against you is gone. I want you to see right now for the first time, Jesus is king. And there is there is nothing hindering that vision right now that you can see that he is king, that he is real, and that he knows your name. And so I see that for someone this morning. So Father, I just want to bless them. Bless them, Lord, physically, spiritually, financially. Bless your people, God. Bless every sickness, Father God, out of their body right now in the name of Jesus. Bless them financially, God. Those who are looking for finances, God. Those who don't see the next paycheck. Those who do not know where it's coming from next. God says, I am going to give you that manna. I'm going to give you that manna today. I'm going to give you that manna. Trust in me and I will provide every day, every day. I will provide your finances. Like the birds of the air, I feed those birds. I will feed and clothe you too because you are my child whom I delight in, whom I delight in. So Father, thank you, God. 
thank you for your people this morning. Bless them right now, God. Bless them, bless them, bless them, bless them. Encourage them, God. Encourage them, God. I feel your love for your people this morning. Thank you, thank you, Father. Come on, let's thank him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your words. Lord, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you, God. Let us follow you, God. Let us follow you every day of our life. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. And we all say, church, we all say a big amen. Amen. Good morning, church. If you're just joining with us, welcome. We are so happy that you're here with us. We would love for you to connect with us. So down below the video, we have a connect card. Please fill out that form. That way we can get to know you better. Also, if you are joining us on Facebook or YouTube, we'll be leaving those links down below the video as well. That way you can also join with us. And if you have prayer requests or anything like that, we would love to know about it. Amen. And we'd also like to take the opportunity to just remind everybody that it is because of your constant financial support and prayers that we're e able to uh, keep going and uh, putting out these incredible messages. And so uh, if you would just take the next couple of minutes, take the opportunity, go hunt down that checkbook, grab your phone if you want to give online. But we want to encourage you, keep giving. Your tithe matters. Your giving matters. You're helping us reach the world. So thank you. Giving to your local church should be easy. And with Tithely, now it's as easy as sending a text. To get started, text GIVE to your church's giving number. You'll receive a reply linking you to the setup page. Securely enter your information and you're all set. Now you're ready to give anywhere at any time. Just enter the amount and you'll receive a confirmation text and an email with your receipt. If you've made a mistake, no problem. Just text refund in the reply. Text giving with Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. Good morning, Church Alive family. We're super excited to have you here with us today. Uh, we have so many great things going on here at Church Alive. You can check out our website, and there is a media library tab that you can go to find all the past messages. Also, please check out our social media platforms, and we're super excited that you're with us. great word prepared for us this morning so no matter if you're watching on your laptop your phone on your TV let's put away all the distractions and just focus on the Lord and what he has for us this morning so get your Bibles ready and let's get to it hello hi sweetie hey we missed you oh I missed you too well Judah's in his room playing so I'll go get him all right, all right. Five minutes to save the world. Honey, can you change Judah's diaper? 
Saving the world can wait. for distractions. What are you doing in here? Oh, I was getting ready to change the diaper. Oh, that? I already did that a long time ago. You were in the bathroom for so long, so I thought, you know, that you needed some space. And so I went ahead and changed his diaper, cleaned the house. Got dinner ready. We did laundry. And then was worried that you were still in here, so I came to check on you. But at least it looks like you're ready to save the world. <sighs> Too much? Just a little bit. Don't worry, Galactic Empire. I'll save you. Sweetie, can you get the baby ready for bed? Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for joining us today from wherever you're joining us from around the world or here in the United States of America. Welcome to uh, this awesome Mother's Day broadcast. We hope uh, 2021. We hope that you will, uh, that God will, will help bring some information to you. That you'll benefit from this information. You'll be encouraged, and of course, we want the mamas to be encouraged uh, as well. Uh, they've got a big job, and nobody, nobody can take the place of a mama in the lives of their children and extend it. When I mean children, I mean talk about everybody you're taking care of. And so anyway, so thank you for joining us. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home, uh, into your place again, and giving us an opportunity to share what we feel like God's putting on our heart today and lives. And and of course, you know, uh, it is it is mother, Mother's Day. I, I really scarcely can believe that I'm already doing another Mother's Day message. It just, it went by so fast. Think about this. Last year, about this time, we were still in, well, it was a little bit longer. We, we were in the 15 days to slow the spread, then the 30 days to slow the spread, and then kind of um, the period of uh, being locked down for a while. But here we are going about life again. And so it just, life is just going by and it's going by in your mom's life too. And so hopefully by the time we get done with this, Maybe it might take an opportunity to go love around on your mom a little bit more and whoever that mom was for you in your life. And to be honest with you, I think there's a lot of women that can be mama, have a mama spirit into the life of other people. And it doesn't have to be just children. It could be grown-ups and, and, and other ladies that are a little younger. They probably need to be younger um, in a way. So... You know, there's a lot of a lot of uh, people that need a good, godly, mama figure in their life, and so, you know, of course, it's about uh, having children. It's also about raising children, even children that are not biologically your own, but are still your own. Amen. And so, why don't we pray and let's get started? Uh, I know there's a lot of festivities today, a lot of people getting ready to go out to eat and are getting ready to do stuff with your mom, so let's make sure we get in and get some information to you, and of course, uh, blessing our mamas, and then let you, let you go. So let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, dear God, we thank you, God, for our mamas. We thank you, well, we thank you, we thank you for you, God, first, because you are the one who came up with the idea of mamas. You're also the one who came up with the idea. It was by your design and by your plans 
dear God, to let another human being uh, birth another ch another person and or receive another child that needs a home and to be able to give that person a home. It was your idea to allow us this, this the joy of being a parent, dear God, and of course, more so probably with moms in a lot of ways, let's face it. You know, moms have a, uh, they're, they're different from us guys. They're, they're a totally different creature. You no, know, they're a human, part of the human race, but they're, they're not the same as we. And they have the capacity, God, to love and to cherish and to care so greatly. And so it's just nothing like a mama. And so, Father, thank you for the moms. Thank you for the moms who, who uh, of course, that you gave them biological children. Thank you for the moms who were not able to have biological children, but yet you still gave them a child. You still brought a child to them. You still, God, gave them um, a little one to take care of. And for all of those who didn't have any uh, biological children or, and then they didn't care for any little ones, but yet have a mama's heart to be able to go and help train up and to be able to pour out and to be able to encourage others. God, thank you for them as well. I think it's a pretty broad stroke that we're painting, God, but it's all true. It's, it really comes down to the heart. I, you know, I, any female could, could have a, a, a baby out of their, their bodies, but it takes a special kind of person to, to do that or and or also have the heart to oversee another person. And you know, I know that they understand what I'm saying. I just wanna tell you, thank you God, it was your idea, it was your idea. And so we cannot under, uh, understate that God, it was your idea to do this. And so Father, we thank you for giving us the command to honor our father and our mother, the first command with the promise that it would go well with us and we would live long on the earth. It doesn't mean as a grown up we have to obey, but we always have to honor. And so we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, God, let your spirit go forth and speak, God, in Jesus' name. And so, as you can know, every year I say some of the same stuff or bring some of the same information to you because there are a lot of uh, ladies that for whatever reason in life they were not able to bear a child from their own bodies, but yet they are some of the best mamas in the world. And there are women who were able to care, to, to conceive and to bear a, a, another human being and to have that baby. And there are some of the best mamas in the world. And there, I think there is a, there's a group of people that were not able to care for any little ones like a baby, but they took on the responsibility of a mother's heart when they see people in need and were able just to pour out and to them, I, I just think that God can, God can do great things through anybody if they have a heart. You know, it's got to be a person with a heart. You know, to to do that. Mamas have a very unique ability to. Well, they they just they. What can we say about the mamas? They do so much. They can handle so much. They do. They uh, are able to oversee so much. And they, they're talking about multitasking. It's just incredible. I've got a couple of quotes here for you that I want to read out, which is interesting. The first one is, a mother holds her child's hand for a while, their heart forever. For most of the mamas out there, you know, it's hard when you think about where you are in life and how old you are and you look about your children, it's like, how in the world are they, are they already this old, you know? Or they're already grown, or they're already, you know, whatever the case is, or already have families of their own. You're always going to hold that child's heart, that, that child's heart, even if you're not holding their their hand anymore. Here's another quote: A mother understands what a child does not say. Isn't that the truth? You know, a lot of times my lovely bride will step in. It's like, what is this little one talking about? What is this? What's going on with this little one? But Mama, I'm talking about Misty, she just knows, and she has a, the gift of God to be able to. Uh, to navigate what it is our little one sometimes if they're upset or sad or whatever the case is is going through um, it, it's it's just amazing and get, it's kind of like deciphering um, or translating sometimes when the little one 
and doesn't know, uh, you know, doesn't know how to explain. And she also, you know, my lovely bride is a mama, has a mama's heart too, because she is able to discern even what some people that are not really their children, you know, their child is saying, but they can discern uh, what that person is going through, even if they're not a child. So, you know, it kind of goes both ways. A mother understands what a child does not say. Well, sometimes mamas understand what, you know, uh, people a little older are not saying e either. And so, anyway, uh, there is more power, there's another quote, there is more power in a mother's hand than in a king's scepter. And that's from Billy Sunday. Isn't, I want to take just a moment to, to talk about that. Think about that for a minute. I'm going to read that again. I want you to hear what's being said. There is more power in a mother's hand than in a king's scepter. You know, mama has such a, God has given mama such a, uh, such power in their influence. You know, nobody wants to make your mama, you know, bent out of shape, upset or cry, you know. And so if you take a look at even some of the not so good mamas, when we think about Herod and, and, um, the, the, the girl that danced and, and stuff for him, you know, and not to get in there for case there's children, you know, her mother told her what she wanted and, you know, worked it through her daughter and then, you know, was able to get something that the King Herod didn't even want to do. And so anyway, I didn't want to get off in that story, but it's just, I'm thinking about these as we're coming up, you know, Solomon, if you go back into the Proverbs and look at the Proverbs, a lot of, a lot of scriptures and Proverbs talk about, you know, not, you know, listen to your father's teaching and don't neglect your mother's instructions, you know. Don't neglect your mother's instruction too. Sometimes think, yes, dad, you know, dad, he's the one, you know, he's he's the head of the household and all these things. But, you know, that that mother comes along and brings great influence to the raising of those children. And to be honest with you, in a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, isn't it the mamas who are the ones who are really responsible in a lot of ways for our Christian walk and our walk with the Lord or our showing up to church. I mean, I'm not saying our dads don't play a big role in that and they should play an even bigger role in that. According to like Proverbs, again, like we say, and probably some Ecclesiastes, you know, don't, you know, you gotta listen to your daddy, his instructions and all these things. And we'll save that one for in June, the daddy's one. But, it, it always comes back to, again, on those scriptures, it's like daddy, uh, father, and your mother, you know, and making sure that you get those instructions. And a lot of times, especially in older generations, you know, a lot of people have to have two working families, uh, two working parents outside. Of course, I always say if a, if a mama could stay home with their children, especially when they're young, young, uh, it'd be best to find a way to do it, even if we have to downsize and all that. Uh, and when the child gets older and they begin wanting to branch out and do their own thing, it might be not as crucial for you. Uh, but anyway, so in a lot, in a lot of sense, the, the mom is, I know my mother, for instance, I, I do have memory, of course, memories of my, my, uh, father, uh, dad, you know, making sure, you know, being kind of around the church and that kind of thing. My stepdad and was a lot of influence there. But really, it's probably my, well, not probably, it was in a lot of ways my mother who is responsible uh, for me being even in the ministry. Her constant prayer, her constant, you know, of course, I think I gave her more than one mental breakdown and caused a lot of great, her gray hairs and all that. But it was through her, you know, through her, her keeping on showing up, you know. It's, I'm in the ministry because of that. And so I just can't, you can't get around that. And so how many of y'all out there that are listening right now, it's because of your mother in a lot of sense that you're even, you've even come to salvation in Jesus Christ. And how many of you that might be listening may not be, you know, uh, all religious or something, but you're interested because of your mother. So mamas, your tremendous responsibility until the day you leave, the, to, to the day you breathe your last breath, you have a job to do and you have a work to do, and that is your primary role is kind of the mothering aspect, and you know, if you're called to that, and so 
Go and, and, and even if your little ones are not babies anymore and maybe they're already grown and left the house and there's other people in your ministry, your church, your neighborhood or whatever that could use somebody that's a strong mother figure to be able to encourage and direct without trampling, you know, like when we're adults now, you know, when we have come our own ways to do that, mamas, you know, you can, you can give encouragement, you can give advice, you can give direction. Just understand when your kids are adults, you know, the, the, the requirement to obey is not there anymore. They have their own families, and I know that, you know, if you ever have a mother-in-law, you know, they like to give a lot of instruction, a lot of direction, because they always look at the us as little, incapable and stuff, and so that's just part of it. But, you know, you can still have influence, you can still give instruction, you can still give your input, just do it more tactfully. Bring it around a different way, you know, think about it. And so, instead of demanding, you know, to do that. So anyway, let's get on a couple of other things here. Uh, today's just, it's kind of a fun thing I wanna just share with you. I uh, encourage you. Moms treasure the little things. Now think about this. Moms love taking pictures and they cry at little moments. How many times do I see my lovely bride looking at the pictures, looking at the pictures, looking at the pictures and stuff and, and even maybe getting teary-eyed sometimes. Some mamas a little bit more cry than others, but uh, just that the, the, they treasure that kind of stuff. They treasure those pictures and those moments. I tell you what, we have probably thousands of pictures of me and my little one. But do you realize that we don't have, but maybe, you know, a, a hundred, let's say out of a thousand, a hundred of my little one and the mama. Why? Because it's always the mama who is the one who's thoughtful about capturing those moments and capturing life and capturing, you know, the outfit that she bought and dressed the child in and, and uh, so, you know, and all of that, it's always the mom who's making sure they got the camera and taking pictures and, and packing this and making sure that all that's taken uh, a care of. But how many of the dads remember to get the picture of them and their mama? Well, daddies get some pictures of the children and the mama today so that they have, the kids have some memories of pictures with their mama. Your mom is the one who cherishes those cute photos of you in those outfits that she picked out when you were very young. I know that we have tons of outfit. There was a, actually uh, a, a series of pictures over the course of years, because we like to go down to the, the beach and go down there, and it was me and my little one standing at the water edge at the beach, and it's always a picture. And you can see the outfits changing as the little one grows up, and the, the height of the little one grows up, but we don't have any of, of the, you know, my bride and the little one doing that. It's kind of like, oh, you know, we got lots of pictures, but just so different. So hopefully I can remember to, to now that I'm preaching about it, do some more picture taking. Mamas also cherish those embarrassing moments and those embarrassing photos that you hate people seeing. I know my mama had for a long time, you know, you know, the talking about the, the pictures of the, uh, of in the buff, you know, just running around as a little bitty, uh, little bitty sitting in a rocking chair, just, you know, in the birthday suit. And, and that's like, why is that cute? That's not cute. Hide that, put it away. Let me get it. Where's my flamethrower? I'm going to burn that picture. It's like, Oh, look, it's like, you know, I would, you know, that was, it's two, you know, we don't need to be sharing that around. You know? So, but mama, they just, they love all that kind of stuff. You know, and it's just interesting. And daddies are like, you know, it's like, get rid of that. Um, so we want to thank our Lord for the moms. Now, that kind of um, attitude or behavior or thought process is not nothing new. You know, we take Jesus's mama, you know, Jesus's mama Mary, pretty important. Um, she was doing some of the same stuff too. So that's not abnormal. That's been going on as long as uh, ladies have been called mamas, that whole cherishing of all these things, probably all the way back in to the garden, you know? It's like, oh, look at this fig leaf. How about that? It's so cute, it's a little fig leaf, you know? Maybe, I don't know. So, <laughs> uh, so let's read real quick just to kind of, to bring this to home on this one. Luke chapter two, verse 51, and he went, and we're talking about Jesus and Mary and Joseph when they went down to Jerusalem and they came on back and 
um, all this kind of stuff. And I want to just get to this because a lot of times I read so much scripture just to get to one point today. I just want to kind of dive right, right straight there. And he went down with them and came, just talking about Jesus, went down with them and came to Nazareth and was habitually, talking about Jesus, was habitually obedient to them. And his mother kept and closely and persistently guarded all these things in her heart. One translation says, but his mother treasured all these things in her heart. All these things, all these things about angel visitations and seeing Jesus at 12, sitting there with the scribes and the fair, you know, having a communication. And it was like people thinking, where did this kid get all this great knowledge of his? And all these things. And, and Mary was just treasuring all these things in her heart. I think that's what we're talking about here is like looking at the pictures and cherishing those pictures and remembering the little outfits that, you know, the child has been 20 years and they still have the little outfit and a little piece of umbilical cord and, you know, whatever, you know, whatever the thing is that people like to hang on to, treasuring all these things in their heart. Mamas have the, a great, it's like a great treasure chest. Their heart is like a huge treasure chest and she takes these bit and pieces of life and puts them in her treasure chest and hangs on to them. And a lot of ladies, when they're, when they're, you know, um, on up in their years and stuff like that, that's this treasure chest they can bring out and look at all these different things. And it is a treasure to them. And, and mamas, let it be a treasure to you. Let it be a treasure. Daddy, we'll talk about you in, 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 in June because you have a big, big part to play. But mama's treasure chest is always looking at putting stuff in the treasure chest. So daddies, men, let them do those things. God designed them to be like that. So let them be like that. Okay. Women and mother, excuse, mothers have an off, we talked about this a minute ago about how many of us were in the church or in Christ, you know, we're preaching or we're ministering or we're just, you know, we're not in jail because of our mothers, you know, and that faith and that, that, that overwhelming um, uh, influence that they have on them is, is so great. And, and I want to bring the scripture because of this uh, 2 Timothy 1.5. I'm going to read that and we're going to kind of hone in on that, what, just what I just said, because it's so important that women have this unique ability to pass on this information in such a way. Daddies do in their own way, but this is called Mother's Day. So I want to read this, 2 Timothy 1, 1, 5. I'm calling up memories of your sincere and unqualifying faith. Now we're talking about Timothy. Timothy, Paul was talking to Timothy about his ministry and all these things, and they could basically get back at it again and get fired up again. But in he, as he was talking to Timothy, as he was bringing this letter to him, he wanted to bring in the mom. That's what I want to get to. I'm calling up memories of of your sincere, Timothy, your sincere and unqualifying faith, the leaning of your entire personality on God in Christ and absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. By the way, my Bible didn't say Timothy. I added that. In his power, wisdom, and goodness, a faith that first lived permanently in the heart of your grandmother Lois and your, Lois and your mother Enos, what was that again? What was this that permanently lived in the grandmother and then in his mother? What was that? Well, let's go back and say it again. This unqualifying faith, we're talking about faith that lived in the grandmother and the mother and what's happening here. Paul was making sure that people understood it was passed on from those women to Timothy. Now, Timothy's in a ministry and his, you know, he's got a book in the Bible named after him. So pretty important guy. I'm, I'm going to say it again. I'm calling up memory, calling up memories of your sincere and unqualifying faith, the leaning of your entire personality on God and Christ in absolute trust, confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness, a faith that first lived permanently in the heart of your grandmother Lois and your mother Enos, and now I am fully persuaded dwells in you also. That is why I would remind you to stir up, rekindle the embers of, of and fan the flame of, and keep burning the gracious gift of God, the inner fire that is in you by means of the laying on of hands with those uh, 
of the elders at your ordination. So there's extra information we're talking about that Paul was trying to say, look at, look at this. I know this faith dwells in you. I know it because it dwelled in your grandmother and that dwelled in your, your mother. And because the grandmother passed it on to her daughter and the daughter passed it on to her son, now, you know, Paul is making, uh, making no. It's okay for us ladies, <laughs> for, it's okay for us ladies, no, it's okay for you ladies to realize that it, you know, part of this big calling that you have on earth is to pass on the faith. You know, it's nothing like a praying mama to boy, shake up heaven and, and to bring down God's glory and bring down those answers because you have a faith and a, and a longing and a heart that's like a man uh, doesn't have that like that, not like yours. You were created different. Remember, the man, the man, you know, the, the guy, the, the first man, Adam, was created from the dust of the ground. He's made from dirt. But the woman was created out of an already perfected and created man. So she didn't start as dirt. She started as a, a completely different creature than the man started at, which was dirt. So think about that. It's, it's, it's amazing to think so different so different and so we need to not we need to be okay with how mamas look at stuff and see things and how they deal with things and they just you know they're looking to keep that treasure chest full but anyway ladies you have such a big job to do keep up keep up the work okay so now for us for the rest of us you know, when talking about our mamas and stuff like that, do we have a heart to want to try to make sure our mamas are taken care of when they when they get on up into the years and stuff like that? Now, I think that any any children that could have their mamas live with them, if they can, it may be take an opportunity to do so. There's a lot of people all around the world, many countries around the world. There's a whole genera generations of families that live together. I'm not saying that's good because sometimes it can be great. Sometimes it can be trying. But I really do believe that when parents get way up on their years and they really do need assistance, um, that the kids could step in and, and try to help take care of them so they don't have to be locked up in some nursing home somewhere. And I'm, everybody's situation is different. There's a lot of... Uh, uh, aging parents, mothers that have physical or mental uh, situations where they, they it's like 24 hour care and, and people have to work and provide and yet you don't just abandon and never show up. So there's no condemnation in this. I'm just saying that as they age, maybe we should think about this. Now, if your mama, mama, if you're still trying to call all the shots, and you're still trying to dictate what's going to happen to your grown children who have families of their own, you need to back down a little bit, okay? The honor of the father and mother is still in effect, but you don't want your children to want to honor you from a distance. So, you know, know that you still have a big part to play. You're just going to have to come at a different angle, okay? You can't spank them and you can't spank your children anymore, your 40 year old kid, you know? So, just allow the new season in your life to become and, and, and use your influence in a different manner. But I do believe that, that families should try to take care of their, their aging parents. And we're talking about mamas, so mamas. And if that means that they have to be in a facility because there's no other way, you're the only breadwinner in the home, or, or you know, there's other situations and that, you know, they need more uh, medical care or something like that, but make sure that they're still a part of your life. And and, and go with that. But like I said, again, if the parents are still calling the shots or making all their own decisions, then, you know, maybe they should kind of have their own place, you know. Okay, and this brings us to our last scripture, John 29, 26. And this is, this is that part that I was just talking about, kind of bringing, bringing us all the way around the basis to home plate on this. I'm just gonna read it and then I'll, I'll give you what I'm feeling like, and then we'll close out. Je uh, Je so Jesus seeing his mother, now Jesus was hanging on the cross at this time. He was fixing to, 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 to die 
and then be buried in a tomb. And he was fixing to go through all of that stuff. So he's hanging on the cross and a lot of great agony. And this is what happened at, at the exchange. Jesus seeing his mother there while he's hanging on the cross and the disciple whom he loved standing near said to his mother, dear woman, see, here is your son. Then he said to his disciples, then he said to his disciple, see, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own keeping own home. And that was in John 29, 26. So Jesus wasn't going to leave the earth without making sure his mom was taken care of. And so he saw the, one of the disciples, a disciple that had a heart that Jesus could trust his mother's life, you know, trust that that disciple would take care of his mom. And so as he knew he was leaving, he didn't leave anything undone. He didn't leave his mom out there to fend for herself uh, when she would be dependent upon help from you know, somebody, it would be Jesus at first, but he wasn't, you know, he's, he's going back to heaven. So, so he made sure that he said, you know, hey, this disciple, see, why don't you look, see your mama? Mama, see your son? And that disciple took on the responsibility, which brings me to the closing thing. That disciple was not her real son. And to Mary, that wasn't her real son that to the disciple, that wasn't his real mama, you know? That's what I want to make sure we get. There was a state of heart that was happening there. John didn't look at Mary and, and say, well, you ain't my mama. And Mary didn't look at it and say, you ain't no kin to me. No, there wasn't any of that. Uh, John took her right into um, his home from that day forward and cared for her like the mama. So. You know, there are people in our life that we treat as mamas and we have a heart to make sure they're okay, especially if, you know, as they get a little older, you know, and if you've got a big family, you've got multiple siblings, everybody can take turns and take their opportunity. Some mamas don't want to live with little certain kids, you know, certain sons. They want to go live somewhere and that's fine, you know, but if your heart is there to make sure they're taken care of, that's, I guess, what we're getting to. So mama's big job. Kids, we got, and, and young people, you know, the, 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 we, we just, we just going to honor them and bless them. You know, there's going to be a time when we're going to all, there's going to come a time in all of our lives, if we live long enough or Jesus does not come, where we're going to say, I sure miss my mom. I wish she was still here. I'd like to just spend a few moments talking to her and, you know, hugging her. You know, that, come, that comes a time in all of our life. Don't waste the opportunity right now. If your mama's still alive, don't waste the opportunity right now. Or other women that are in your life that, that have been mama figures, don't waste that time because we're not guaranteed another day. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. Amen? Well, since we're not guaranteed tomorrow, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He would really like for you to know him as Lord and Savior. He would really like you to know him as Savior. And so in just a few moments, my associate pastor is going to come forward and he's going to lead you in this very special prayer. Listen, we can't give away what we don't have. We're talking about a lot about love really intertwined in this without even saying love, but it really is about that. You can't give away what you don't have. And so Jesus, God is love. And so without him in your life, we might have a form, but it's not the genuine love that God's talking about. And that starts with understanding that God loves you and that he sent his son Jesus to die for you, to be able to legally forgive you of all your mistakes and all your sin and invite you to be a part of his world, his kingdom forever. And just think about this. If your mom is saved and you get saved, then even if our bodies die, we, we go on living forever. We never have to be without our mom ever, 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 forever. And so, you know, of course, you know, we want it because you love God or you want to get to know him, but there's all these other benefits. The Bible says don't forget all of his benefits. Amen. So associate pastor is going to come in a minute, lead you in a very special prayer. Ask Jesus in your heart. And if you need to uh, recommit your life to following after him, do so and let us know. 
There's all kinds of ways to contact us and let us know. We're here as a global partner to the church. Church Alive is a global partner to all the churches. Church Alive and our live media network are here to be resources, here to be uh, able to come alongside you, even in other de denominations, other the churches, to be able to be uh, a help for you, a support for you, and um, an asset for you. Before we let you go and pray that simple prayer, Father, thank you so much for allowing us to take this time. Thank you for our moms. God, I know that we can all say that, you know, we've all been, maybe gotten bent out of shape with our mothers before, but we don't want to get to the point in our life where we say, I sure miss my mom. I, I sure have spent more time with them. God, we love you. Please help us. Please help us, dear God, to even put offenses aside and forgive. God, we all make mistakes. We all have done things wrong. And Lord, you forgive us, dear God. Love us, forgive others. God, we ask you to watch over the, the, the people today. Let them enjoy their day. God, and we love you in Jesus' name. Here's my associate pastor. Oops. Here's my associate pastor. Thank you for joining us for the service this morning. If you've been feeling in your heart that you would like to give your heart to Jesus Christ, I want to urge you not to delay a moment longer. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till later. Let's do it right now. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. So again, don't wait. God made a way for you to never have to be separated from him. Sin is what causes that separation in our lives, but he sent his one and only son to die on the cross, to live that perfect life that none of us ever could so that we would never have to spend another moment without him. We are God's children. He looks at us as his children and he does not want to be away from you. And so if you would like to begin your journey knowing God, accepting Jesus Christ into your heart, we're going to make it very easy for you. I'm going to say a prayer right now. And if you would just repeat after me, it doesn't matter where you are, repeat after me and let's accept Jesus Christ into our hearts together. Let's begin this journey with him together. Let's bow our heads. Jesus, thank you for coming to this earth and living a perfect life and dying on the cross for me, for my sins, for my mistakes. Thank you for taking all of that on your shoulders so that I could be forgiven and have eternal life. And Jesus, I may not know much about you, but I want to spend the rest of my life getting to know you better. I accept you into my heart and I pray from this day forward that you help me live my life, not for myself, but for you alone, and I give myself to you completely. And I thank you for the gift of salvation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, I'm so excited for anybody who just prayed that prayer with me. This is a lifelong commitment. We may not get it right, but that's what the grace of Jesus Christ is for. And we're excited for you. And so if you need prayer, if you would like to just let us know that you prayed that prayer with us this morning, please look below the video on our Church Alive website. There's a connect card. Fill that out if you would. If you would like us to send you some reading material, some helpful information to get you started on your walk also, please just let us know. Thank you again for joining us this morning. We're excited to get to walk this walk with you. Okay, go. <laughs> no. Okay, now. Kind of concerned that you were in here. No, do it again.
diaper. Let me fix that again. Almost ready for bed. <laughs> yeah. Just. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Okay. Can you get the baby ready for bed? I think about you, so I came to check on you. <laughs> now let's do that again. What an awesome service we just had. Thank you so much for joining with us and worshiping with us this morning. Check out all of our social media platforms and every platform. That way you can stay connected with what we're doing. We love you. We hope you have a great week. Be blessed. Bye-bye.